I'd like to thank Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Today I want to show you a really interesting formula for pi. And this formula is due to Borwain, Bailey, and Plouf. And this is going to be split into two videos. So in this video we'll derive the formula, which I've written above. And in the second video we're going to explore a really interesting property of this formula, which allows us to calculate hexadecimal de digits of pi without calculating all previous digits. So for example, you could find the hundredth digit without finding any of the ones before it. So you haven't found the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, up to the 99th. You can calculate that single digit. So that's pretty interesting. Okay, so let's look at our formula first. So we'll show that pi is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over 16 to the n, and then we've got this sum of four objects. We've got 4 over 8n plus 1, minus 2 over 8n plus 4, minus 1 over 8n plus 5, and then minus 1 over 8n plus 6. And maybe the first thing that jumps out is that all of these look like 1 over 16 to the n times something over 8n plus something else. So maybe it'll be useful to look at something like that in general. So let's do a little bit of exploration. So we're going to look at the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over 16 to the n and then 8 n plus k, where k takes on like different values. And so this will help us quite a bit because here the k value would be 1, here it would be 4, here it would be 5, and here it would be 6. So this will wrap all of this up into one thing. Okay, so I'm going to start by writing this as the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over 8n plus k times 1 over the square root of 2 to the power 8n. And I want to write it like that because I want my exponent to look more similar to what I have in the denominator down here, just based off the fact that this is probably related to geometric series. Okay. But then from there, I want to get something having to do with this k in the mix. And so I can do that by maybe adding a plus k here. So now my exponent matches my denominator. But that reduced a square root of 2 to the k in the denominator, so I need to introduce 1 in the numerator, and I'll slide that in right there. But now I'm going to write every term of this series as what I call a zeroth integral. So it'll be like a function evaluated at two places. So in particular, what we'll do is write this as the square root of 2 to the k, and then we'll have the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity. I have 1 over 8n plus k, and then I'll write this as x over the square root of 2 to the power 8n plus k evaluated from x equals 0 up to x equals 1. So that should do the trick. But now I can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus and replace this zeroth integral, in other words, this evaluation at endpoints, with an integral, a first integral, if I take the derivative of you know, this function that I'm taking the zeroth integral with respect to. So let's see what that'll give us. That'll give me the square root of 2 to the k. I still have that out front. And then I have the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity. And then I have the integral from 0 to 1 of x over the square root of 2 to the power 8n plus k minus 1 dx. So notice by taking the derivative, my 8n plus k came down and canceled this, and then I have a 1 smaller for my exponent. But this isn't quite right, because by the chain rule, I get a square root of 2 in the denominator outside after taking this derivative. Well, I can take that square root of 2 in the denominator and cancel this square root of 2 to the k down to a square root of 2 to the k minus 1. Okay, nice. But now we can apply geometric series summation to this. So we'll have the square root of 
2 to the k minus 1, and then we'll have the integral from 0 to 1, and then, and like I said, we'll apply a geometric series summation to this. Maybe the best thing to do is notice that this is x over the square root of 2 to the power k minus 1 times x over the square root of 2 to the power 8n. So we've got a starting term and a common ratio. My starting term is x over root two to the k minus one, and my common ratio is x over root two. So that'll leave me with x to the k minus one over the square root of two to the k minus one. And then we're left with one minus x to the eight over 16 in the denominator. And again, that's because my common ratio here is x to the eight over square root of two to the eight. I think I misspoke before. Okay, so now let's see if we can cancel some things out. This root 2 to the k minus 1 and this root 2 to the k minus 1 will cancel. Then we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by 16, and that will leave us with the integral from 0 to 1 of 16x to the k minus 1 over 16 minus x to the 8 dx. But that's really good news because that'll allow us to write this big sum right here as an integral, which is a le little easier to work with. So let's do that. I'd like to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is an online interactive learning platform with thousands of lessons on a variety of topics ranging from simple to advanced and new material added every month. You could, for instance, start off the morning studying basic arithmetic or number sense. And then maybe by the evening, if you work hard enough, you could learn differential equations. But Brilliant doesn't just offer math courses. They also offer courses in computer science and some other sciences, including physics. Brilliant offers an interactive and unique take on learning with awesome hands-on puzzles and graphics that make learning fun. Recently, I've been working through Brilliant's math history class. This has not only given me a new appreciation for the development of mathematics, but also has given me some nice anecdotes to share with my students. So what are you waiting for? To get started now, go to brilliant.org slash Michael Penn, or click the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. So we just got done showing that the sum is n goes from zero to infinity of one over 16 to the n times eight n plus k was this nice integral. So it goes from 0 to 1, and it's 16 x to the k minus 1 over 1 minus x to the 8. And now we'll apply this rule that we've just derived to our sum right here. Noticing that this sum is really made up of four things that look like this guy right here. Okay, so let's do this transformation. So this is going to transform into the integral from 0 to 1 of... Let's see, we'll have 16 times four, which is 64. And then here, my k value is one, so I'll have x to the zero. And then it'll be minus 32x cubed. So that's because right here, my, my k value is four, so four minus one is three. Then I've got a two here multiplying the 16, making 32. And then my last two terms will be minus 16x to the fourth and minus 16x to the five, because that's the appropriate k values there. And then this is all over 16 minus x to the eight dx. Nice. And from here, what we'll do is factor the numerator and the denominator. This is like a little bit of a tricky part, but if you like play with it a little bit, you can find the factorization. And it turns out the numerator factors like 16, and then you have one minus x, and then we'll have two plus x squared. And then lastly, we'll have two plus two x plus x squared. So that's the factorization of the numerator. And then for the denominator, you can repeatedly factor this using a difference of squares until you get it down to something manageable. And what we'll end up with is two minus x squared times two plus x squared times two minus two x plus x squared. And then finally two plus two x plus x squared. Nice. And now let's see what cancels. So notice this 
2 plus x squared will cancel with this 2 plus x squared. And then next, this 2 plus 2x two plus x squared will cancel with this one right here. So that's the simplification that we get. And so that'll leave us with the integral from zero to one, and then we'll have 16 times one minus x, because that's all that's left in the numerator. And then we'll have two minus x squared, and then two minus two x plus x squared in the denominator dx. And from here, we'll do a partial fraction decomposition. So what I'll do is I'll sketch it out down here. So we wanna take this integrand, 16 times one minus x over two minus x squared times two minus two x plus x squared. And I'll write it as ax plus b over x squared minus two. And then plus cx plus d over that quadratic. So that's x squared minus two x plus two. And so this is maybe a non-standard way to do the partial fraction decomposition because this one factors into more linear terms. But for our purposes, this is actually gonna work out quite nicely. Okay, so from here what we would do is multiply by the denominator of the left-hand side to clear fractions here. And that'll give us 16 times one minus x equals ax plus b times x squared minus 2x plus 2 and then plus cx plus d times x squared minus 2. And then from there you can set up a system of equations to solve for a and b, but I'll jump to the solution. So we'll end up with a is equal to 4, b is equal to 0, and then c will be equal to negative four, while d will be equal to eight. So putting that together with a little bit of factorization allows us to write this integral as four times the integral from zero to one of x over x squared minus two dx, and then minus four times the integral from zero to one of x minus two over x squared minus two x plus two dx. So we're left with something like that. Okay, so now let's actually bring this expression up here and then we can finish it off. So we just left off with our big sum expression equal to the combination of these two integrals. And now we will work on this second integral for a bit and we need to complete the square in the denominator. So let's take that denominator and write it as x squared minus two x plus one, which we can factor as x minus one squared, and that leaves us with a one outside like this. But since x minus one squared is the same thing as one minus x squared, that's actually how I'm gonna write this. I'll write this as one minus x squared. And that's gonna motivate the following change of variables. I'll let u equal one minus x. That means x will be one minus u and that means dx will be minus du, like that. And then furthermore, when x is equal to zero, u will be equal to one and vice versa. When u is equal to zero, x is equal to one. So that'll allow us to write this as, after copying down this first integral, we have minus four times the integral from one to zero of minus one minus u all over u squared plus one and then we'll have a minus du from the minus dx. Okay, so let's see, we can take this minus sign here, turn it into a plus, and we can do that and change the order of the bounds of integration, and then we can take these two minus signs and cancel them out. So this will leave us with u plus one in the numerator here if we have just a du there. And now let's finish this thing off. So we can take the antiderivative of this, this will give us two times the natural log of the absolute value of x squared minus two evaluated from zero to one. I get a two instead of a four because by the chain rule, if I take the derivative of x squared, I'll get two x. So that needs to gobble up part of this four. And then for this u over u squared plus one, I'll get something similar, so plus, two times the natural log of the absolute value of u squared plus one. And then that needs to be evaluated from u equals zero to u equals one. 
But this is something interesting that happens. Notice if you plug one into this, we will get natural log of one, which is zero. You plug zero into this, you get natural log of two. If you plug zero into this, you get natural log of one. If you plug one into this, you get natural log of two. But the natural log of two here is in the lower bound, so it's attached to a minus sign, whereas here it's in the upper bound, so it's attached to a plus sign. So that means this and this cancel. And we're left with the only remaining portion of this, which is four times the integral from zero to one of one over u squared plus one du. But the antiderivative of that function is an inverse tangent. That gives us four. And then the arctan of u evaluated from zero to one, that'll give us pi over four times four because the inverse tangent of one is pi over four, but the inverse tangent of zero is zero. So in the end, we get pi. And so we finished our goal of this first video, which was to derive this formula in the first place. So look out for the second video where we show that interesting property of that formula of its ability to calculate digits without calculating previous digits. And that's a good place to stop.